Welcome to The Mix, you guys. I hope you enjoyed my mom's premiere episode of Get Into It with Tammy Roman just now. You know what? She killed it. I expected it. I'm so proud of her. Um, and as you can see, we do have on our hoodies from 17-year-old entrepreneur Journey Carter. She was yeah. on the show recently. Uh-huh. She was on the show recently to, to promote um, her new collection, and we're so happy to support tonight. So make sure that you guys check out her new clothing line on Instagram at underscore the journey collection. And we will have the link on our IG bio. But we have a great show for you guys tonight. We have Bankroll Freddy joining yeah. us to talk about. Yep. He's going to be talking about his hot new song with Meg The Stallion. And then we have HBO's Black Lady Sketch Show, Sky Townsend. We'll be getting into the mix with us as well. But before we kick off the show, you know, we got to celebrate because Derek Chauvin has been convicted on all charges for joining. Come on, yeah. come on, somebody. <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, Today is just a great day, baby. It's a great yeah, it day. Is, it is. What a great the way to celebrate in... Great way to celebrate. Ah, <laughs> wow. It is. <laughs> That's what today is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, don't act like you ain't know. Right? Yeah, he's trying to he trying to play it off like he. No, let me know. tell y'all. Can I tell y'all something about me? I think when I'm like older, I'm gonna live my best life. Like I'm like so like obedient and everything, Ralph. But like I'm gonna be like Snoop when I'm older. I feel. Okay. I, I okay. Think okay. Be for sure. Yeah, I can see that fifty year old on the beach with his thing, like yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you said what is what thing? What thing? You talking my about? little shorty. I'm just saying, oh. like my shorty. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Anton, you was your mom was where my mom was at. I was like, what you mean? Thing? My, what's that little thing? Like this, like his thing. Yeah. You know? That's what. All right, next subject, y'all. Next. Yeah, y'all crazy. As I was saying, the verdict came in this afternoon, um, and there's a lot of celebrations going on on the streets right now, and hopefully that'll bring some peace to George Floyd's family. But what do you guys think? How are you guys feeling right now? Mm, I'll I'll say that. I got to be very transparent and I was very optimistic, you know, that he would be charged. But if I'm if I'm very transparent, I'm going to be honest and say that I did not think that he would be charged at all. I did not think that they would evict him. I didn't think that he would be found guilty. And if I remember correctly, this was the case that sparked so much outrage from millennials and Gen Zers over the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. And we went to the streets and we rallied and we protested together because we were tired of seeing our black brothers and sisters being killed unjustly by the police. So for them to show the world that it's not okay and you will not uh, get off on you know being convicted, I am happy in one instant, but in the same, just today, I just learned that another little black girl named Micaiah in Columbus, Ohio, a 15 year old little girl was just shot and killed by a police officer. So while this is a huge step in the movement and what we're trying to do, I also think that we just have a long, long way to go. And yeah. Tom, go Tom, right. a, a big key that you said, we gotta have justice, but it's all angles because I heard there was another story in Chicago, a young girl I think was killed at McDonald's or something. I don't know if y'all heard about that, but it's like, we everybody need justice. I don't care if it's somebody on the streets, if it's a police officer, it's like nobody's bigger than anybody. If you do something wrong, if you murder somebody, you need to go to jail. You need to pay the price for that, just like everybody else does. And it's just unfortunate with this George Floyd situation that it just took so long, you know? Even if, when you was watching those hearings, you like, we got the video evidence. The man was mm -hmm. murdered in daylight. Like, why are we here? So today is a good day, but like Tom said, at the same time, it's like, where's the real change? A, another young kid was murdered by police today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what well, I'm, honestly, to answer your question, guys, I'm feeling a little bit hopeful because honestly, like I know Anton said, you didn't think he was going to be charged. I didn't either. And I thought mm -hmm. they were going to acquit him. And I think he as well, if you saw his demeanor during the trial, 
he seemed very relaxed. I don't know if you guys kept up with the trial, but I watched like 80% of it. He was very calm when they were mentioning his misconduct. He would smirk and he just looked too confident that he was going to be acquitted. And honestly, hearing that, not only was he guilty on three charges, it was second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. Mm. Which those are hard to prove beyond a reasonable doubt for the prosecution. So honestly, I do want to also honor the prosecution and all their work to defend George Floyd when he wasn't here to defend himself. And, you know, there's a lot more cops, like they're all saying, with Dante Wright, who was just murdered by the woman police officer because she thought her gun was her taser. So, yes, there is a long way to go, but I think if we don't celebrate these small victories, like finally police are being convicted of their crimes, then we'll never be happy because it's always going to be little, 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 and then the big change will come. Mm. Mm. I like the fact that they, you know, I feel like they made an example out of him because he honestly looked shocked when he was like convicted of it. He looked shocked. Like, I don't think he looked relaxed. I think he was kind of like, they really in here. Like, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was getting. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, honestly, I never got over Trayvon Martin. I'm hooded up right now, you know, so I think it's definitely a step towards the right direction. So I'm just happy that they're holding him accountable for his actions. Mm. Well, I, I hope this brings some peace, but I think that we really need to turn our attention to the sentencing because he's been found guilty of second degree murder, like you guys said, unintentional murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. So he's facing up to 40 years in prison. But do y'all think that he will get the maximum sentence? Well, I do know that the court is trying him for an aggravated sentence, which is like, I believe I'm 100% but like the max and possibly more because of the severity of his crime. And they also revoked his bail. So now he's going to be in jail until sentencing. So while I hope he gets the max sentence, honestly, I don't know. I'm a little nervous. Yeah. I definitely am a a little nervous for the sentencing part. I feel like I hope that it's not just a thing where, you know, they're convicting him to make us, you know, happy and feel like, you know, we're getting somewhere. And then he gets a little amount, I mean, a a little time charge. Like that will just be like a setback in my in my yeah i don't yeah. think the full sentencing i don't don't think he's going to get the maximum to me in my honest opinion i really believe that they could not allow this man to get off free they knew that in every state in america there were going to be riots there were going to be um people just making them up and going crazy because this had to be the example going forward for every other case similar to this so i think while they couldn't allow him you know, to get off free, I think how they're going to really get off by him is giving him like a short sentence, giving him 10 to 15 years, and then he gets out in like five. Well, I'm hoping that this brings some peace to Darnella Frazier as well, since she was 17 years old when she filmed the video of George Floyd being murdered, and her testimony during the trial was heartbreaking. Now, do you guys think a verdict would have been reached so quickly if she hadn't gotten the whole video? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. We wouldn't even go. Oh, yeah, there wouldn't even be a trial. There wouldn't be charges. There'd be none of that. No, no I, like the only difference with the past and now is we just got cameras, you know, we're able to see it right. so fast. We have social media where you could see the truth. But if there was no, you gotta imagine in the past there wasn't no video evidence. So they'll just go and walk. And one of my friends was saying. Look, there's a lot of good cops out there, too, but you got to be man enough or woman enough to put on that badge. If you put on that badge, don't go in there saying that you're afraid and you thought that you were grabbing a taser. That means you're not suited for the job. So when you do mess up, you have to go through what everybody else go through. And I think that's what needs to be made. Like if you make a crime or a mistake, just like we're going to be punished, you have to be punished as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also just want to applaud Darnella, too, because for her strength and her bravery and courage. Because if you remember with Eric Gardner, his friend who recorded that, uh, Ramsey Orta, he became a target um, and his jeopardy was then at freedom. So a lot of people, when they get in these positions, they can easily fold. So to have her testify up there and stand on her truth and stand on what she saw, I think we have to applaud that as well because a lot of people, when their jeopardy is on the line, they gonna fold. She could have easily been like, mm, well, I still have my life. So let me just go on with my life. But she didn't do that. So she brought us justice as well. So I think we, you know, we have to applaud her for that. 
Something that she said while she was on, when she took the stand that really hit home for me was when she looked at him, she saw her father, she saw her uncles, she saw her nephews, her brothers, and it's one black man. And if you have a black man in your family that you love, you see him when you look at George Floyd. And that just really like made everything understandable for me. And it really was home for me in that part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after the verdict was announced in the streets, you could hear people chanting Black Lives Matter in front of Cut Foods, which is the convenience store that George Floyd was last seen in with the $20 counterfeit bill. So what do you guys think that this means for the Black Lives Matter movement and for us moving forward? Mm. It's, it's well overdue, you know, I, I'll never forget. I was on PV out campus at the time that Sandra Bland was going through what she went through with the cops. You got Michael Brown, you have Eric Gardner, you have Breonna Taylor, you got Tamir Rice, who was just a young boy. This is well overdue, Trayvon Martin. So I think it's just, and many others, of course, but it's definitely a step towards the right direction. And now, as you said, Jamie, I feel like we can only be hopeful. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think we need the Black Lives Matter movement because when you have two sides and one side has a victory, I can only imagine what that other side is going to do to try to, you know, get back at us for this, the Proud Boys and those racist, you know, white men that are out there. Like, so we need the Black Lives Matter movement after this, especially after this moment. Yeah, and you know, you know, for me, man, I'm not big on, you know, this side or that side and color and this. It's like, this is a fight between good and evil and like i tell y'all it's like it's a spiritual war going on as well you know where it's like they have a lot of people like Tom said that isn't going to be happy that today happened they wanted it to go the other way they thought that you know he was in the right so for me it's always going to be about just do what's right if you do what's right in this world then we'll be in a better place mm -hmm. yeah that's huge and like romeo said it's not because i know people always assume racism and white people and it's not black people versus white it's all of us no matter race color gender sexual orientation against racism against xenophobia against evil yes romeo evil, evil. i'm trying to say <laughs> it's not separated by race or color it's separated by morals and intelligence and i that, think Jamie. i'm gonna call romeo that i think we need to go to break pretty soon yeah. Oh, I to mention that. Guess what, y'all? Right, it's right, time right. to go to break, okay? Uh, we'll be back with y'all. Keep it locked to the mix only on Fox. So we got an amazing guest coming up. Keep it locked. The mix. Yeah. Welcome back to the mix, baby. Now, our next guest is an up and coming artist who is making waves. He's one of the hottest new additions to the already stacked label, Quality Control. And he's here promoting his latest project, Big Bank. His song Poppin' with Meg Thee Stallion has over 3.6 million views on YouTube. Yo, that's amazing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Bankroll Freddy to the mix. What's good, man? What's up with it? How y'all doing? Good. How you doing? Doing good, man. Can't complain. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, bro. Now, I see that uh, you're a rapper from Arkansas. And I have to say, I know there are a lot of talent that's coming out of there. But would you say that you were one of the first like, in, in the mainstream? You say, you say I'm one of the first, yeah, most definitely one of the first one to come out of Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't got no big music scene down here, you know what I'm saying? I'm one of the first one to do it. So, you know, that's major. We love to see you in that, man. That's huge. I really about to put Arkansas it. on the map. That's all I'm saying, for real. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Come on. So Arkansas is literally like in the dead center of the country, which means that you guys are like close to all the major cities. So I yeah. know, who inspired you to get into music and what kind of music did you and your homies like gravitate to? Uh, like, like, say, Vincent, like where I'm from, I'm from Helena, Arkansas. So it's like, like 30 minutes from Memphis. So like a lot of Memphis rapper, like culture wise, Memphis, you know, we close to Louisiana. Like, I say, like, you know, Boosie, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, God is. Okay. You know, yeah. Three C's live, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so we like that. Niggas that's in the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. But 
<laughs> nah, I know. I got to give him his props before we go because he he kind of remind me of what my pop's doing being from the country. It was always the East Coast and West Coast. You knew Biggie, you knew Pac, but sure. you didn't know down south. And I feel like that's what he's bringing to Arkansas where you about to put Arkansas on the map. You know, I've been out there. They always show us a lot of love. And I feel you are going to be that type of impactful artist. For sure. Appreciate that, bro. So why do you think it took so long for Arkansas to get in the game? I mean, because I mean, we gotta get we gotta get heard because you know what I'm saying. Like a lot of people like think this is like country. Like a lot of people think like a lot of like white folks from Arkansas. Like a lot of people, like it's black people from Arkansas. Like when they actually <laughs> they be surprised like it's black people from Arkansas. Like for real, but you know what I'm saying. Like we just gotta be seen. Like a lot of people like ain't big on social media down here. You know what I'm saying. Like. Like, I know y'all probably don't, but a lot of people down here still got, like, got Facebook and all that shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, everybody, but, like, uh, kind of like that side of the country, because I know my people back home in Michigan, everybody's on Facebook. I'm like, what? I ain't doing yeah. it on Facebook. It's like right. 2010. Yeah, like, <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Well, you know, as an up and coming artist myself, I always like to ask, how did you get started in the game? Well, uh, like three years ago, man, I was trying to find something different to do because, you know, man, I was up in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I was trying to find something legit to do. So, you know what I'm saying? So I started rapping, just doing music and stuff like that. So, and um, I got on really from a challenge, you know, that act up, City Girls had that act up going crazy. Right. And I had, I had this little act up freestyle. I really had started the act up challenge. I did a little freestyle. Oh. Okay. And then got it. I, I tagged P the City Girls and, you know, man, P signed me off a challenge <laughs> for real. Wow. Because that's what yeah. I was just about to ask you. You got signed to one of the hottest labels in the game. So I was going to say, how did you and P link up? But I guess them challenges pay off. Yeah, okay. man. That was crazy. That's dope. That's dope. It's me ready to do a challenge. Not hold yeah. up. <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Yeah, that challenges put like smaller artists on. Like if a challenge you do or a freestyle blows up on like TikTok or Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever, like you could be the next artist winning a Grammy. Like it's right. crazy how social okay. media brings light to people that wouldn't get it otherwise, you know? Mm, it's crazy. It's a blessing for sure. Of, uh, social media, we saw on the gram that P got you like he blessed you with a new car. So can you tell us, you know, what, what kind of car it was that he blessed you with? Yeah, man. You know my guy, man. Got me that uh got me, got me that lamb truck, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> the lamb truck, you know. Uh, he Gee. showed he thought I would do. <laughs> Oh my God. Can I get a lamb truck? I'll do a challenge. I'll do a little TikTok challenge. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Hey, but that, that show uh, his belief in you and then the talent that you have because God already put you in a position. You just got to play your role and, and stay ready. So you ain't got to get ready. But that's just, that's a confirmation of what you really going to bring to the game because P know who got the talent. P know who could actually go make some noise in this yeah. game. So even him doing that for you, that tell you a lot about yourself as well. Yeah, for sure, man. He believe in me, man. I ain't going to lie. He yeah. believe in me. I don't believe in myself. Yeah. Would, you say that's, would you say that's the most extravagant gift, like, that anyone has ever given you? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Hand down. <laughs> lamb <laughs> truck. Hand down. I mean, it don't get much better than a lamb truck. Like, that's can't... what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Yeah, we need new friends, y'all. <laughs> I'm named right. I feel like we should all write a letter to P saying why we deserve a lamb truck. <laughs> Period. I'm gonna hey, be a rap. I'm never to spit like him though. I don't know if you could spit yeah. like him. That's why I told you my my letter will be in rap form. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're gonna get one of the raps live on the air, okay? You gonna oh, rap? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that ain't, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing at all. That ain't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I heard that you have a rags to riches story. So, what was Freddie doing before he became bankroll? Friend? Wait, Ton, hold on, man. We don't need to know everything, Fr Freddie. Don't tell him everything, okay? Just the whoa, piece. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> tell him about my Master P ice cream man. The tell him Master P ice cream man is for. He in the mix now. Nah, I know, like, for real, though, like, you know, I mean, 
I was in the streets, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was doing what I was doing, you know, getting money. Like, that's how I got my name. Oh, okay, because I heard you worked at Jimmy John's. Is, is that true? <laughs> did. I did. Yes, Jeff. Just... Listen, <laughs> hey. I you didn't want to tell us that. Listen, no, nah, hell no. Nah. I still got. <laughs> <laughs> you, can scroll, you can scroll down my Instagram. You can still see me on. I got my picture up on there. Yeah. Yes. I put my work on the uniform. Hey, I ain't shame of nothing. You hear me? That's what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to yeah. we got to how we live. We did what we had to do. To exactly. To yeah. So, so yeah, I worked at Jimmy John's also, but you know, I, I did my thing. I was, you know, I had to do what I had to do. I was on probation. Yeah. I had to have a job. Exactly. Okay. That's what real ones going to do. You got to eat. You got to do what sure. you got to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. That's what the younger well, generation needs to see and know, though, for real. Oh yeah, I, I let it be known for sure. Like I ain't ashamed of nothing, man. I wouldn't never handle my business every day. <laughs> man. Uh, you know, so if you weren't rapping, if you weren't rapping, like what do you think that you would be doing? Trapping. Period. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It's just I'll that. Be, I'll get being real. Period. Yeah, I'll, I'll be getting that money. So <laughs> like <laughs> we hustle. If I want to do that, I'll be hustling straight up. Nah, but God no. definitely bless you and showing you another way, my brother, for real. Because even my family, we see you go left or right. You know, even my pop store. People don't realize my pops worked at a, a, a phone store. That's how he learned his hustle. You know, the bell bomb boy and all of that stuff. And then it's just like seeing people like you really make a difference out of your predicament. It shows anything possible if you really believe in yourself. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. All you got to do is hustle for it, grind for it, go get it. Yeah. You know, I have to say too, you definitely have favor over your life because I was doing a little research about your life and you had said that you had been shot at and some bullets grazed your head, but you made it out, you know, safe and alive. Yeah. So that's number favor, man. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I've been shot. I've been actually shot, shot. Like, yeah, I've been grazed in the head. You know, I've been, man, I don't mean I'd have been through it all. So with everything, but mm. I guess okay, being my my co-hosts did their research. I love that. Oh, um, now, <laughs> now I want to talk about your song "Pop It." For one, this song is so fire. We listen to it at the gym every day, and uh, it'll obviously be on everybody's summer playlist. And it's with Meg The Stallion. So we want to know how this song came about, how the collab came about. Please tell us about it. Yeah, man. So, um, uh. Band play, he with uh paper right, he with young Dolphin. You know? So he sent me some beats one day and I was just a, I was in a studio vibe and I had heard the beat I want that beat first. And as soon as I heard it, I said, Man, this like twerk jam. This is gonna be crazy. Like, I gotta get Megan on this jam. Yeah. So we reached out to Meg and we hit her up. And you know what I'm saying? Like they hit back it, like, all right, I'm gonna let her hear with the Like, called it like hey, she said she loved it. She said she on it. So I called P I'm like, yeah, nigga, I got I got a Megan Stallion feature. He like <laughs> gotta make this Italian feature, baby. Period. I like, need a second man oh, truck. Yeah, man. Exactly. Like, exactly. Listen, he like, man, you ain't got no Megan the Stallion feature. What what a song is, bro. I said, man, she ain't did it yet, man, but she gonna send it to me. Like, man, what about? He said, Megan don't do features. Baby been trying to get a feature for a year from Megan, man. She don't do features. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh. I'm like, bro. I said, she says she gonna do it. He like, yeah, all right. Man, um, four or five days later, she sent a song back. I sent it to P. Man, he like, man, man, how you, man, what, man, how you get that feature, man? What, what, what you do, what do? He was just shocked. He couldn't believe it. You know, man, like, man, she went crazy on my shit. Like that song mm -hmm. out of here. It's crazy. The song is out of here. It is me love it. Fire. Yeah. The video is stupid. Oh uh, yeah, we went crazy. We went out to LA. We shot that thing. It was a whole movie, a whole vibe. And she actually down to earth. She down to earth like me. Like no matter what type of level we are, you know what I'm saying? We always gonna be the same person, humble. Yeah. So on that. your tape, um, your tape that you just dropped called Big Bank, you have some really dope features. Um, and right. you have a song called Dope Talk with Two Chains and Young Scooter. So yeah. I gotta ask. What type of dope talk did you and Two Chains have? Did he give you any good advice? I mean, yeah, I know. You know, I've been knowing Two Chains for a little minute, like from being around Pete. Like I run into him in the club, and he like a real authentic person. Like you know what I'm saying? Like a real, he like a real street nigga. So you know what I'm saying? Like he just giving the game, just keep on going. Just you know what I'm saying? Like 
hey, we can do it. Anybody can do it. You know what I'm saying? He was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people that are really, really, really in the streets. And, like, they changed over. You know what I'm saying? Rap changed their life. Exactly. Now, I got to ask you, man, you know, you got any tour plans? Because everything opening back up. So you Oh, yeah. I'm going like I'm going crazy right now. Next month, I got like 14 dates already. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I'm, getting, I'm getting like I'm getting that's like a 14 dub. Lambo yeah. trucks right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's another Lambo truck for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so are you are you pulling up to uh LA so we can all come see you? Yeah, I'm trying to hello. I got a show coming up in LA for real. Oh, okay. Hey, That's on. Might be a move. Bless y'all city. Hey, Jamie, you want to go to the to the concert? I'm down to go. If you're down to go, I'm down to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can get Romeo on the way. Yeah, Romeo. Yeah. Nah, I gotta hit up that New Orleans. I gotta hit up that New Orleans show. Mm. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Romeo said LA don't do it for him. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> I love Cali, but the New Orleans energy. He gonna see when you go on tour, every city different. So you know, yeah. New Orleans, we be in that thing, gam and turn up everything. I heard y'all yeah. turn up though. I heard New Orleans turn up like no other city. Different, very different. Very different. Yeah, New Orleans right by us, like Louisiana, right by Arkansas. Yeah, y'all Louis- right above us. Really? Yeah, for sure. Yep. We're right there. Nice. Well, Bankroll, like your career is already off to an incredible start. And I want to know what is your ultimate goal as an artist? Man, like, we really just keep on progressing, like, keep on getting better and better. Like, anything I do, you know what I'm saying? I want to try to do my best in it, you feel me? So I want to just, like, be one of the best to do it, you know what I'm saying? Just keep on going hard, keep on getting better with this rap, and just keep on moving forward, keep on going up. Ooh. Amen. Uh, I hear now, that. Obviously, got favor of your life, so I can definitely see that happening. Yeah, now nah, he on his on way, the way for sure. He's moving up for sure. Well, y'all, we have to take a quick break, but we want to thank Mr. Bankroll Freddie for getting into the mix with us, and be sure to go get his newest project, Big Bank, on all music platforms. And when we come back, we got one of the stars of HBO's A Black Lady Sketch Show, Miss Sky Townsend. She'll be joining us next, right here, baby, on Fox Soul. So come back. Welcome back to the show, y'all. So our next guest is a singer, he's an actress, and podcast host who has been killing the game lately. She joins the cast on the second season of the Emmy-nominated series, A Black Lady Sketch Show. Returning to HBO this Friday, y'all, so make sure y'all watch. I loved, loved, loved season one. I love funny women. Like, I just love it. It's amazing. And y'all, we got a little sneak peek of season two, and this girl, she's going to make you die laughing. She's the star of the show for me. So please welcome Miss Sky Townsend to the mix, y'all. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for that intro. Hey. That was an intro. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be true. I mean, you had me dying laughing, so I had to be real. I had to let people know. Thank you so much. <laughs> so excited for people to see it. Yes. Yeah. All right. First off, I got to say you're super talented. Okay. <laughs> But you're the daughter of Black Hollywood royalty. I mean, the legendary producer, director, writer, Robert Townsend. I mean, what was it like growing up in y'all household? You know, it's so funny because when people ask me about it, um, I always say it was a blessing to watch my parents love what they do. Right. And so in my household, when you think of work, you think of fun. And that's how I was raised. If you don't love it, don't do it. So with my dad, he's like, if you enjoy this, just make sure you prioritize fun in the process. And so he's kind of on a cloud watching all of this happen right now. He's ecstatic. And, uh, you know, I asked him for not too much advice because then it would turn into him coaching me the entire season. But (laughs) it's it's really beautiful. And, And we visited the billboard together and just cried together. And it was really beautiful. And you really come from an amazing oh, family, even follows, checking you out on Instagram, seeing how you move and operate. And, you know, you're so beautiful, but so funny and so woke. You know, that's very rare in this uh, day and age. And I just got to tell you, you know, keep going. You really are a trailblazer. But I want to put my my co-host on the spot real quick. Uh oh. Y'all know who Superman is? Yes. Oh, OK, cool. Y'all know who Meteor Man is? Come on, now. come on, come okay, on. Okay, God. Now, oh, now Media God. Man, that was the first superhero that I saw. That's, That's the only what I grew up on. As a kid, it was Media Man. 
I was in my auntie in the basement watching Meteor Man. It wasn't Superman, it was Meteor Man for me. We know, right. we know Jazz don't know what this is. Jazz. I never saw uh, old Meteor Man. <laughs> I've never seen it. What? what is going on? Who's Meteor Man? What? Your dad was a superhero and that's who Meteor Man is? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay, I, remember, I don't have that Man. visual. Oh yeah, God. he had Meteor Man, and then up, up, and away on the Disney Channel. But okay, Meteor yeah. Man, oh, oh, yes. oh, oh, oh. I'm thinking of. I'm yeah. thinking okay. of up, up, and away. I'm glad you said that. Thank yeah, now nah, I was okay. look. I was now with my now. hood cousins watching Meteor Man. That's what we was on. <laughs> that's, that's old school. Yeah. Why have you seen this movie? And that's your dad. You know, I'm a Five Heartbeats fan, but I just, I can't okay. do too much of him. So I just, I do it in doses. <laughs> this so, is me. Five Heartbeats me, girl. I'm like, you, you get a I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have an interesting story about your dad. I know firsthand how incredibly humble and caring and helpful he is to other artists. When my sister was in her uh, third year of Juilliard, he connected with my sis and he completely helped and mentored her and connected her to different casting agents and got her some auditions. So your dad is an incredible, incredible man. Wow. Yeah. Hey, look at us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that being said, um, your dad is deep, deep in the game. Now, did you know when you were younger just how incredible your father was and like the respect that was on his name in these streets. Did you know this? You know, it's funny you say the word respect because I think he was the first sign of respect that I really, you know, saw growing up. I was like, why is every black person on earth going like this to you when we're out? Like, <laughs> everywhere we went, like, yo, man, Got man to. <laughs> who is this guy? Um, but it's, it's really powerful because growing up, I wanted to be famous so bad, just fame, fame, fame. And the more I saw him, I was like, oh, I want to be respected. So the way that I'm moving in my career, I have to kind of navigate differently to get respect versus just fame and numbers and whatever. And so when I look at him, I'm like, you're not the biggest star in all of the world, but the respect and the people I've seen come up, I go, that to me is really winning. Is, is your peer? Oh, preach. Oh, I love it. <laughs> she did it, baby. She did it. There you go. There you go. No, wow. That's the energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. I just want to say, Sky, you are so dope. You're a singer and an actress. And I have a story, too. So when I was about 15 or 16, you had a show at... UCLA campus grounds and yeah. you performed a song called Hazel with a guy named Mickey Monday. Yes. Ring a bell? Yeah. And I said, oh my God, this girl is incredibly dope. So now like to see what you're doing now, I'm like, oh my God, I knew it. Like I knew she was going to blow out. Like I told you. That was, and I went, that was I 10 years ago. Wow. It was a that long, was, that's what I'm saying. That was 10 that was years ago. Crazy. Um, but what I wanted to ask you was when did you realize that you had these talents? Uh, you know, it's really funny. Um, life is so full circle. I was doing character work as a very little kid. Um, my dad, I don't know if he was purposely training me because he's like, somebody gonna do this. Uh, but on the way to school, uh, we would play a game called radio. And he would say, how many characters can we squeeze in before we get to school? So he'd be like, all right, uh, hey caller, I, I hear we have Kathy from Texas. And I'd be like, hi, yes, I am Kathy. I won't say da, da, da. He's like, oh, actually we have Bobby from London. And then I'd switch to that accent. And so it was like learning how to do comedy through fun games. Um, so I was very young knowing I had the skill, but I, I think I stopped myself from getting to success for a while because I was lazy and didn't know it. Um, I thought like God given talent was enough and I didn't understand why people weren't catching on. And it wasn't until I humbled myself and got into class and was around people who had never booked a thing in their life and were just dying to do the work. And I said, oh, I need to reevaluate how comfortable I got with just having little wins like this ain't nothing yet, you know, so it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Well, let me tell you that, that humbling yourself and that reevaluation has landed you on the Emmy nominated HBO comedy series, A Black Lady Sketch Show, which is incredible. And it's coming back this Friday. So tell us your story of how you joined the season. So uh, I got a I got an email about auditioning for it and they asked for three to five characters. And I wanted the job so bad that I did 11 in the in the in the self tape. And uh, a day later, they said, all right. Um, you get to the next step, you're going to do one scene in front of the creator and you'll play eight different people talking to yourself. And I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, 
okay. And I have how much time? They go 10 a.m. tomorrow. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I'm ready. Yeah, for sure. So I go in, I give my all. Um, I left, I just prayed. I wanted it so bad. I mean, I'd been auditioning for 10 years. Nothing was really picking up. And then I was grocery shopping a week later and I got the call and, um, that was the moment when I realized like, sometimes you have to celebrate by yourself because no one was answering the phone. So I stood <laughs> in the middle of the grocery store. I cried, I thank God, I, I praised my, you know, I was like, this is this is nothing but God and timing and aligning. And, um, and I had to celebrate myself. And then I booked this in December, 2019 and had to be silent until now. Wow. So talk wow. about celebrating by yourself. My friends couldn't know. I couldn't send behind the scenes. So it really humbles you to be like, you got to love the work enough to not be trying to flex or show it off, yeah. like mm -hmm. do the work. And when it's time to show it off a year and six months later, now I get to share. And what so many people oh don't goodness. know is yeah, that when you see someone pop on the scene, you see them on a TV show or in a movie, they've been doing this for years. There's a mm -hmm. thousand no's before you get just that one yes. And all you need is that one yes to pop just like you are. And yeah, I, I've done about 600 auditions and only booked four. Wow. So, yeah, this was the one yes that changed it all, but 600 auditions at least. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm about to come mm. uh, study over there with you because now <laughs> I can finally break this news. Y'all show is so on lockdown. I auditioned for your show, but I signed the paper said you couldn't even tell people you auditioned for it. I <laughs> know you did. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's why I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah, it was so locked down. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But uh, congrats to you. You're truly amazing. I got to ask you as an actor, how do you come up with the concepts and mannerisms of your characters? Because you be on point. Listen, something that people don't know about the show is we're not told what they sound like. We're not told how they look. All we get is a script and like a really small description, like Shelly and she's annoying. Whatever that means to you, you then develop the whole person. So when I went into this, I wanted to just use as many voices as possible. Um, use, you know, you look different depending on what you assign your face. So if your mouth is like this, you'll look different from your mouth being like this. So I just was trying to find different ways to look like a new person every episode. Cause I play 25 Wait, people. how you did that? Let me see. We go from there. You can go good, you can go fat, you know, you can do everything. You're the door. You're the door. Okay, cool. Thank you. I Don't take it so it. far, you probably won't recognize me at least six times. But wait, you're playing 25 characters on the show? That yeah. is that's amazing. Cool. Like, yeah. that's incredible. I can't wait to watch the show. She a real actress. She a, she a real yeah, like, you know, I think I, I think I smell an Emmy nomination that may be coming soon. Yeah, I think oh, I think you know actually. <laughs> it's definitely over here in my house yeah. as well. Yeah, it's, it's in LA it's, for sure. All in this crib. I smell it, baby. I receive it. You know, it's it's, it's funny too because I fully locked down and was fully sober doing the show. I was like, no liquor. I'm only eating healthy. I didn't see any friends and family for two months because I wanted to focus on only on the work. So it was really heavy mentally because you play a character, you're in full hair and makeup, you go to sleep and you wake up as somebody else. So the toll it kind of takes on you, you get comfortable playing them and then you're completely somebody else by, by 4, 30, 5 a.m. the next day. It's crazy. That's called dead. Now, yeah. before we run out of time, guys, I just wanna, I know you guys have some amazing guest appearances on the show yes. and without giving us too much, who yes. are some of your favorites that we should just be looking out for? Okay, honestly, Kim Waynes from In Living Color came on and I love the Waynes. Yes, shout out to Kim. Yeah. I love the Waynes and I love giving people their flowers. I grew up watching her and then um, Omarion kills it and Jesse Williams kills it. And so I'm looking okay. forward to everyone seeing it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Then hearing you talk about this show, I'm so excited to do it now on Friday. Like everyone right now, I need you to write down while we take a quick break, put a little reminder in your phone watch this show this friday please <laughs> i'm happy because miss sky is staying in the mix with us and we're gonna talk hey. about it. so keep it locked right here on fox soul we'll be right back welcome back to the mix you guys we're here with one of the stars of hbo's hit show a black lady sketch show hey. sky townsend she's going to get into some topics with us and anton i'm coming to you because you know this topic is about your newly revealed crush, Miss Lisa Ray. Yeah. So why don't you just, you know, get us right into it? I'm saying pride in my heart. 
<laughs> okay, so it looks like Lisa Ray made up with her sister, Brad, which I'm very happy about because, you know, we love, we love when family gets together. At the Brad's birthday party last week, they were seen hugging it out with an emotional embrace. Lisa Ray revealed right here on Fox Soul that she was hurt by the Brad because of her lack of communication. Now, we all know that family can be tough and fallouts can happen. So have any of you ever fallen out with a sibling or a family member? Should we let Sky go first since, yeah, she, I'm like, since yeah, she's the I'm guest? Like, yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. like. <laughs> we was ready to squabble for sure. Yeah. Sky, just do one of your characters for this. Don't do the real Sky. Do the, the play Sky. You know? Listen, no, I, I can say that I was part of the problem. I was. <laughs> um, I was part of the problem because I was a little judgmental because I was living my life differently. And so my sister wanted to party. She wanted to drink, whatever. And I was just, I came at it the wrong way. And I came at it like I was her mom. And it wasn't coming from love. It was coming from judgment. And I don't think like our relationship, I mean, we fought. I'm not going to lie. We was we was fighting in the middle of Ventura. And oh, we like fought. Stabbing? It was like stabbing and stuff. No, we were we were punching each other in the middle of the street oh. and we got caught because my dad's assistant drove by and said, I just want to let you know, your sister, your daughters are punching each other in the face in the middle of the street. Uh, and I'm like, good you said perfect, like, perfect timing yeah. when we call it in. Um, we were, yeah, we were fighting and um, and it was just also, you know, you have to understand where your siblings are coming from and you have to understand that you might remember things differently. It's not your job to tell them why they shouldn't be hurt by a situation. You can talk it out, but you're always going to stay in like nitpicky sibling land. If you're like, actually, mom didn't do that to you. Sometimes you got to bite the bullet and go, you know what? I don't remember it like that, but I hate that that hurts you. Let's move forward. So, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. she's we're now best friends. We're so annoying. We yeah. basically speak a different language, but we started really, really beefing because we couldn't see eye to eye. And it happened for years. Yeah, wow. Scott, you know, the good thing about your story is having that uh, family love, I think it prepares you for life because you realize that everybody see life differently. I have seven brothers and sisters, so I realize we come from the same home, the same blood, but we see life very differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the cool thing about family because you're going to always fight. You're not going to always agree. But the thing is, could you be man enough or woman enough to make up? And that's what's most important. And it, bringing it back to the Lisa Ray and the brat, it's beautiful to see them do that as public figures because we all go through it. Yeah, yeah. and the, the Lisa Ray, oh, I was gonna say really quickly, the Lisa Ray and the brat story really hit home for me because I had the same experience. You know, on Fox All The Mix, I came out um, about my sexuality and my sister felt blind, blindsided, you know, and she just felt like, okay, well, how can you tell, you know, the world instead of coming to me and, and being open and honest with me first. And Sky, what you said, it is, you know, she's older than me. So you made a great point. Sometimes it can be a bit judgmental as siblings. It's like, well, I'm living my life like this. So why you can't do this? Not understanding we're two different people. We're separate people raised in the same household. Like you said, Romeo, but I chose to go this way with my life and you're going this way. We could still be great people and great siblings. But, you know, it was crazy because we didn't talk for about a month after I um, came, we got in a big argument and talked for about a month after that episode. And um, I'm not the type to publicize anything. So I'm just dealing with that in my own world. And I was in the club one night and a guy said, hey, just out of the blue, I felt like it was God. He said, hey, how's your sister? You know, I went to school with her. We crossed paths. She's real cool. And it made me realize, you know what? I need to pick up the phone and just put my pride aside and, and talk to her and say, hey, this is why I did this at 24 and you at 26 should be able to say, okay, Jazz, we can love each other and accept each other for where we are in our lives. And now, like you said, Sky, we're, we're best friends again. You know, like Lisa Ray and the brat, you're your siblings. You're going to hug it out. You're going to fight. You're going to hug it out again. That's just how it goes. So, Well, Jazz, can you hit us up to the next uh, next little hot topic? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. I want I want right. to get some more hot topics in, you know, like. Uh, wait, wait, wait. No, we can't. Let me go ahead, Jamie. I know we have to go to break, but. Because I know, yeah, family is, like, very important. But I also want to mention, like, there are a lot of families and siblings out there that are struggling to see eye to eye. And I want to say, like, mm -hmm. it's okay, you know. Not all the time can every bond be fixed. And I'm not saying anything, me personally. I don't really have any sibling stories. But just people I've been around. You know, sometimes 
family can't, I always say that sometimes family, family can be the most toxic people and the people that are holding you back. So just, I want to be the voice for people out there that are like, you know what? I feel like my family wants me to do poor in life. You know, sometimes I know Romeo, you're not going to like this, but I feel like sometimes some people do have to venture out on their own and be their own person. No, I agree with that. They don't have that support system. I do not disagree, Jamie. I definitely, everybody has a different situation. You know, family could be the thing that catapult you and help you and it could be the thing that pull you back so you got to make sure you're on your journey and your purpose and what's meant to be it will be yeah so i just wanted yeah. to make sure we said that as well yeah. like it's okay whether you have that sports system or not because us exactly. here on the mix and sky will be your support system baby we're all <laughs> your family right here on fox soul but i <laughs> know we have to take a break so i think anton i think that's you this time okay well, think- let's break. well listen we're going to take a little bit of a break, but we have to thank the beautiful, the funny, the vivacious, the incredibly talented Miss Sky Townsend for getting into the mix. With her. <laughs> so listen, you guys can go check her out on season two of A Black Lady Sketch Show, which starts streaming this Friday. Say it again. This Friday. This Friday. This Friday. Yes. Thank you, guys. Friday. What's so good at what you do? I had fun. Best interview. This was oh, so yeah. fun. Yeah. That's what we wanted. That's, that's, that's what we wanted. Guys. That's what we like to hear. Both vibes at the mix, baby. So make sure y'all lock it in and come right back right here on Fox Soul, y'all. Yeah. Welcome back to the mix, everyone. We're almost out of time, but we have to send a huge thank you to Bankroll Freddy and Sky Townsend for getting into the mix with us. And we want to shout out the Journey Collection one more time because we need y'all to run it up and match us. And that was our show, right, guys? How great. Yeah. That was a great great show. show. That was a great show. These hoodies, thank you for uh, shooting these out to us, Journey. Journey. You don't know how happy I was when this came through the mail, girl. Look, 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 y'all. We just want to thank you guys for watching. So make sure you're following us on Instagram for all the latest pop culture news and exclusive content. Find us at The Mix Fox Soul. But stay tuned right now for the Tammy Mac Late Show. But first, Fox Soul is going to be saving you some money again this week with their special Fox Soul deals. Check it out. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Gonna blaze up. I think my hoodie fresher than yours. Hey, so my hoodie fresher than yours. Oh no, baby! You see, I got the extra green on mine. Green one. That's the one I was. Wait, you didn't notice we had the same one on? 